Welcome back to the channel. Bitcoin holding strong. And you know what? I think the elections don't even matter. Bitcoin's gonna do what it does anyway, like it always does. First of all, Trump realized, uh, certainly before the Democrats, that there are 80 million crypto holders in America, and a lot of them are single issue voters. And it's a very passionate community. And so, like, being anti crypto is a little bit like being anti dog. It's just not smart politics. And so, I think the Democrats are getting there. Uh, but Trump got there first. I like to say we the people got there first and it doesn't matter what the politicians think or do because we the people outnumber these damn fools. I agree with you that the mainstream media is not just biased, it's just like all propaganda all the time. And the turning point for me in realizing this was COVID, I think before COVID, I realized that, yeah, you know, the, the media, is, the mainstream media is largely consists of liberals, so they're going to have a liberal bias. What we saw during COVID was that they were even lying about science, right? It wasn't just politics. It's like everything. You know, we were told that um, the pandemic was a pandemic of the unvaccinated, even though even if you got the what they were calling the vaccine, it didn't actually stop the spread. You go on and on that, you know, we had to basically do social distancing, except when the riots of 2020 happened, then you're allowed to go outside and actually participate because it's a social <laughs> justice cause. So therefore the health changes. I mean, it was like right. on no, and on No and on. church, but you can go to a protest. Right, right. So No it's, surfing. So it was like, for me, it became so obvious that, uh, that the media is just, again, it goes way beyond bias. You know, it's like, it's just all wrong. Now, at the same time, I think that you do raise a good point, which is once you're outside the world of the prestige media, yeah, you are kind of, on your own, you're, you're, on, you're, you're, on, in, you're on independent platforms. I use X to try and figure out, you know, who I should listen to. And the way I do it is I compare who said what compared to what actually happened. So like who ended up being right about the issues? And then I will follow them more and I will defollow the people who are wrong. It's really simple. For example, on the issue of Ukraine, the number one quoted source in the mainstream media is a think tank called the Institute for the Study of War. It's basically a, a neocon funded think tank who are the relatives of Victoria Newland, who was the architect of our policy in Ukraine. Everything they've written over the past two and a half years about Ukraine has been proven wrong. They said that the summer counteroffensive last summer was going to be a giant victory. It ended up being a disaster. Sorry, these are her relatives you're saying? Her relatives. And the, the mainstream media, the New York Times, so on, quotes ISW, it's, if you go look at the, the citations, it is the single most cited authority by the mainstream media, and they are consistently wrong. Who was right about the summer counteroffensive? Well, I was, for example. <laughs> While we're handing and out I, credit. And I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I certainly didn't need to be paid by the Russians. I just figured out what the truth was. Okay, J. Cal? <laughs> uh, so, you know, you, 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 bring up, you bring up these, you know, these... Um, stories about Russian influence or whatever, the real influence operation in this country is by the mainstream media. They're the ones who are spreading disinformation about the war in Ukraine and so many other issues on a scale that dwarfs what any of these like handful of podcasters that most people have never heard of uh, can ever hope to accomplish. I want to leave you with this clip. This woman speaks nothing but truth. We all have to fight and stand up together because all they have done to us is divide us. If we don't start to seriously fight for our continent, for our religion, for our people, our countries, then this time that we live in will go down in history as the time in which Western nations no longer had to get invaded by hostile armies in order to be conquered. This time will then go down in history as the period in which the invader was actively invited in by a corrupt elite. And not only did this corrupt elite invite the enemy in, they made the native population pay for it too.